It may have been just another first round series, but it was one of the most memorable ones. Not only this season, but in the history of the Gagarin Cup playoffs. Running champs made their first step towards another trophy, but that was enough to meet an equal opponent. It was a seven-game series, seven incredible games between two legendary Russian teams. Before the puck drop for Game 6 in Yaroslavl, local train stations were flooded by Dynamo fans. The town was being painted blue and white. Moscow fans expected the series to end later on that night. A few days ago, Game 5 went into double overtime, which could tilt the ice into Dynamo's favor. Besides, last time Dynamo played a seven-game series was back when they beat Avangard in the finals. Lokomotiv was pinned against the wall. They had to fight like there was no tomorrow. Right before Game 6 of the series, Yaroslavl Hockey had a good reason to celebrate. In Lokomotiv's old rink was installed a memorable plaque dedicated to Sergei Nikolaev, a famous coach who did a lot not only for Yaroslavl, but for Russian hockey. By the way, this rink is called after him, Sergei Nikolaev Arena. That, of course, is just a coincidence, but here's a storyline for you. On Sergei Nikolaev Memorial Day, Lokomotiv played their most important game of the season. Hours before the game, dozens of desperate fans were still hoping to get a ticket. You could cut the tension with the knife. It's impossible to imagine what was going on in the dressing rooms at this time. Dynamo section at the rink is packed. These fans have their own battle to fight. Today is a historic day. There will be no other chance to witness what's coming next. Moscow versus Yaroslavl. Instant classic. No one at the ring knows yet that they're in for a real shocker. During the national anthem, it's clear this is more than just a game. At this point, standings at the regular season didn't matter at all, as if it was another tournament. Underestimating your opponent equals failure now. Lokomotiv is a very good team. They have skill and experience, says Dynamo Moscow forward Maxim Pistushko. It's definitely one of the toughest series for Dynamo ever. Lokomotiv get a lot of experience this season. In one year's time, they became a team that could knock reigning champs out of the playoffs. They learned from their mistakes. We tried to save energy a few times when we played against Dynamo, says Loco's defenseman Igor Yakovlev. That cost us two games in the regular season and the first game of the series. We learned from that. We didn't learn just from our mistakes, says assistant coach Dmitry Yushkevich. Win or lose, we take something from every game we've played against them. Obviously, playing against Dynamo in the regular season helped us a lot. Lokomotiv improved the game so much you couldn't help but wonder who was more responsible for that. Petr Vorobiev, who coached the team most of the season, or Dave King, who turned Loko into something else within a month. They both did well. Petr Vorobiev built the fundamentals, work ethic, physical condition and self-esteem. But this is Dave King's team now. 
Loco learned from both Varabiev and King. Varabiev definitely gave King a good team to work with. Loco was heavily criticized for hiring King right before the playoffs, but it definitely worked for them. A foreign coach with work experience in Russia made Loco fly on the ice. He made them believe in themselves. Winning mentality comes from winning. It wouldn't be possible without Varabiev's fundamentals, but it wouldn't be possible without offensive mind and King's hockey either. As if there was any lack of storylines, there's another one. Sergei Konkov and Ilya Gorokov. Two former Dynamo Moscow players were willing to do anything to beat their old team. It was them who played the biggest role in the blowout win for Loco in Game 6. Dynamo was truly stunned. These guys are definitely our leaders. They played for Dynamo last season, so they understandably wanted to win the series badly. They play hard every shift and they lead by example. Побеждать и вести за собой ребят. Ilya Gorkov snipes one home past Alex Yurimenko. Local's captain doesn't give his former teammates a warm welcome. Well, at least Dino players didn't see the way he smiled after the game. It really tells you a story, doesn't it? Была похожа на кошмар чемпиона, как и празднование первой шайбы. I hope local fans like what they saw. I don't care what Dynamo thinks about it, says Gorokov. What are you going to do about it? Chop his head off? No. We need to pay him back with a few goals of our own. If that's the way he thinks he should celebrate his goals, let it be. We'll see if he can keep this up. And this is a good example how Gorkov treated his former teammates in the slot. Here Gorkov battles with Leo Komarov. Gorkov showed no mercy. None shall pass to Sanford's net. After Sergei Plotnikov made it 2-0, Sergei Konkov made it 3-0 with an absolute beauty. Dynamo coaches were shocked, so were Dynamo players, and so were Dynamo fans. Dynamo's general manager Andrei Safronov went down to the bench after that. Dynamo was facing something they've never faced before. Loco scored six unanswered goals in this game. It's one of those times when you can't say it was just another game. That night, Loco dominated. We allowed three goals and then we just waited for the final buzzer, says Dynamo's coach Alex Narok. I don't think there's a difference between losing 2-1 or 11-0. It would have been even worse if we lost 1-0. We're not panicking and we're getting ready for the next game. Locomotive fans arrived to Moscow on three buses. It's about 200 people. However, there were even more waiting for them at the rink. Dynamo's home rink was painted red, white and blue. Chants from two towns rocked simultaneously. Dave King had to convince his guys they just played another period of a phenomenal game six. Alex Narok, though, had to convince his guys this was their final battle. All game long, Dynamo had to catch up on the scoreboard with Loco. Narok's team was ready for the game. He was able to shuffle the lines as he wanted, which led to interesting line combinations. Narok did everything he could to change things around, but Loco was faster, better, and stronger. Loco is a hard team to play against. They really should thank Pedro Barabio for all the work he's done. If it wasn't for him, they probably wouldn't have beat us. After back-to-back -back championships, unbeatable Dynamo finally met a better team. A team that was built by three coaches. Tom Rowe, Pedro Barabio and Dave King. The coach swap definitely gave us new emotions. This is why we changed our game around a little bit. We play better with every game, even in the playoffs. Many things were against Dynamo, but the main reason Dynamo lost remains the same. 
underestimating locomotive. Dynamo battled till the end. They never gave up. I just think we were a little faster and a little younger. These were the keys to the series. There is no rule that every player should be available for combat after the game. This is why the majority of Dynamo players locked themselves behind the door, leaving in the dressing room the youngest players. There was nothing they could say. It was really quiet. A few minutes ago, Lokomotiv turned the best KHL team into the worst. And here comes the final touch. Alex Narok bumps into Yuli Last season they both drank champagne from the cup. Today Znarok won't shake hands with Konkov and Gorokov. When asked to comment their performance, Znarok was rather short. If I was still playing, I would make sure they wouldn't leave the ice. As for Lokomotiv, after they eliminated Dynamo, they went on to the next round to face SKA. But they went on as a brand new team.